Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, speak to us one more time. Bless everyone in Jesus' name. The theme is supernatural abundance. Supernatural wealth. But we're looking at how to increase your income. How to increase your income. Life is all about growth. To stop growing is to start groaning. Life is supposed to be dynamic and not static. It said a part of the jaws is a shining light that shines more on a perfect day. Proverbs 4, 18. So you must take practical steps to gain motion in life. And to rise, you have a price to pay. If you don't pay the price, P-R-O-I-C-E, you don't get the P-R-O-I-Z-E. You don't wait for change. You enforce change by applying relevant forces. Everybody wants income to increase because demands are also increasing. Is that true? There are certain things you need to do for your income to increase. And I'll be sharing with you seven of them I wrote, but God gave me just one while I'm standing here to make it eight. So I add this one. I walk with the Holy Spirit no matter what I'm doing. I hear from him as my ears his friend. How many want the income to increase? It will increase in Jesus' name. Yes. If you want your income to increase, number one, be a problem solver. Be a problem solver. You are created to solve problems on earth. Problems are the bad place for promotion and relationships. Joseph solved the problem for Pharaoh. He did not pray. He just went to the palace. Somebody's hitting the palace after now. <laughs> David solved the problem for King Saul. Saul invited him to the palace. You've been invited to the palace. <laughs> Doctors solve head problems. Lawyers solve legal problems. Mothers solve emotional problems. Pastors solve spiritual problems. Mechanics solve car problems. You are born to solve a problem. When you find a located problem you are born to solve, you don't look for money. Money looks for you. Shout a better amen. amen. Because problems are gateways to change. Your earnings depend on the problems you solve. Are you hearing me? God will give you a problem to solve. Amen. Shout a better amen. Amen. I said, God will give you a problem to solve. Yeah. And your income will grow in the name of Jesus. Yeah. There are two types of employees in every organization. When David solved the problem, I'll teach that properly. David solved the problem for Israel. He didn't beg. David had the best in town when he killed Goliath. Are you getting what I'm saying now? If you read 1 Samuel 17-25, but when I go back, I will tell you. When I, in my teaching, I'll get there, so I don't want to talk about it now. David just saw problem for the whole of Israel. He was giving a wife free. They gave him money free, and all his debt was written off from the family. But Saul promised that whoever killed Goliath, that is it. Goliath was their biggest problem. Goliath was their biggest. And then the, David just got some things, three things free of. Child. Saul said, anybody will kill you. My, my daughter is your wife. David said, eh. Glory to God. We have two types of employees. Those who create problems and those who solve problems. <laughs> you belong to one. I said there are two kinds of employees in every organization. Those who create and those who solve problems. Are you hearing me? Just listen to me. You fall into one of them. No neutral ground. A, those who create problems. 
There are those who go to work just to pay for the pay. There are those who go to work to work just for the pay. You may not be able to get everything because it's a bit fast, so get the tape. They arrive late and leave early. Waste time in the office doing nothing. The ones who cripple. They use company resources for personal use. They talk about those ahead of them and speak heel of the company that pays them. If you keep talking about where you're working negatively, you are creating problems. You're not a problem solver. Leave that place. They, are, they have poor customer service. If somebody's angry when the person comes and is running, they don't care. They say, you can go. They are unreliable, unfaithful, and not loyal. They create division through gossip and complaining. These are the ones who create problems. They are abusive and a disgrace to the organization. For everyone that owns or is ahead of an organization, people who create problems should be released from their system, from the system. Permit me to use a very wrong word, sack them. Otherwise, they will keep causing more problems. Then B, those who solve problems. See number one. They are always in high demand wherever you find them. People look for them everywhere. There are those who dictate problem and solve it even if it means involving other people to solve that problem. May you be such a person. They work with an open mind. They have good customer service. That is, if somebody is frowning, they call you back. I said, no, 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 don't go like this. Please come back. They make sure you don't leave the environment unhappy. They are respectful. They do not participate in gossip. They do not match watch their bosses and anyone in the system. Defend management and can work under no supervision. They don't have to supervise them to work. Does not waste the organization time and resources or use it for personal gains. They are people of integrity. They are reliable, faithful, loyal, kind, very helpful, and have the best of attitude. These are those who solve what? Problems. But here these people of God. Beware of those who call themselves Christians and are terrible in their work. In the name of church, they carry Bible, yet they do nothing. Beware of them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Problem solvers merit increase in pay. And I pray that you become a problem solver. So I hear. How many want their income to increase? Are you a problem solver? Or a problem yourself? Number two way to increase your income ask for more problems to solve. Second way to increase your income is to ask for more problem to solve. Hear this and hear me well. First, make sure you are an expert in the work you are currently handling. Don't ask for more when you have not perfected what you are doing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? First and foremost, be an expert in what you are doing. Then when you go to your boss or whoever is in charge, don't ask him for money first. Ask him that he should give you more problems to solve. The mistake people do is that they go, they say, I increase my salary. No, when you go, tell him, for instance, I'll explain what I mean. You can say, well, I love this company, I love my job, and I'm grateful to be in this place. 
I would like you to give me more responsibilities or give me an opportunity to do more. That's what you mean. Are you going to answer now? Can you give me more assignment? I would love to do more assignment. Give me an opportunity to do more things here. You're telling him to give you more problems to solve. That they, whatever he has given to you, you have the capacity to handle it, so you should increase it. At that point, see work as a problem to solve in exchange for a reward. Then you become a problem solver. But in a situation where you told them, you have told them they should do that and they want to take advantage of you, for instance, the organization, there was organizations who are Shylock. Even when you're solving the problem, they will never pay you. Instead, they will reward you with big title and big selfish share. Tell them you want to leave. Tell them you want to walk. That is when you are solving problems and you're putting all you are. I don't mean when you're doing nothing. Only the blind will let you go at that point. They will give you whatever you ask for. Because you are proving yourself already. That is the problem solver. So here. The immediately you say that, they increase your pay. They say, well, we'll pay you more. I had a story told me in a finance organization. I was talking and they said, young man, very good young man. He has been working and working and working and they'll be just using him, using him. And then another company said they want him. They gave him a salary far bigger than almost three times the one he was earning. So he came back to them and said, if you don't pay me this, I'm going. So they said, we'll double it, we'll triple it, we'll put more money on you. So he didn't need to beg. His position and his capacity created the wealth. He said, this is what I've been offered. If you're ready to pay me this, no problem, otherwise I leave. But if you're not a problem solver, you will agitate. They will increase it. <laughs> when you're a problem solver, you don't beg for increase. Increase comes. So here. So ask for more problems to solve, not for asking for more money. More money simply means more capacity to solve more problems. So here. Number three, if you want your income to increase, be different. Be different. Be what? Be different. You can't make any difference if you don't dare to be different. In being different, solve problems quickly and swiftly. Solve problems what? Quickly and what? Swiftly. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's way to solve problems you delay. But be quick and what? Swift. He says, see it, a man diligent in his what? Business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before many men. Proverbs 22, verse 29. Solve a problem others refuse to correct with cheerfulness. Don't solve problem frowning. You put people off. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, the message has never said, be cheerful no matter what. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Be cheerful. What? Don't carry your problems to your office. They are not the ones that cause the problem. If you and your wife quarrel, leave it at home. When you get to office, put your face smiling. Sit here. Hmm? Your husband abuse you. Don't carry that to your face. To the office. They are not the ones who married you. Do it cheerfully. Now look at, for instance, Naaman was a leper. Was a what? Tomorrow we are going to dwell on Naaman. The miracle service tomorrow is on who? Oh, you will be blessed tomorrow. Glory to God. The maid was able to know that he needed an answer from prophet Elisha. And she said to him, look, master, let's go. There's a man of God who can solve this problem. So solve problem, others are incapable of solving and you will never be despised. Look at David and Goliath. David and who? King Saul said, I'm going to reward whoever will kill this man who is causing so much problem for us. Now look at this. See his income grew. First Samuel 17, 25. Look at it. So it will be different. 
Say to yourself, be different. David was different from all his brothers. You know why? They were all covenant what? Children. They were all covenant? Now, the difference matters a lot. If you are not different, you will never have your income increased. I'm going to tell you something. I learned from everybody. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killed him, this is Saul speaking, the king will enrich him with great wealth and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. That means the father's house will never be indebted. Who killed Goliath? These three things were given him. Did he pray for the income? <laughs> he saw a big, he was different from his brothers. Now listen, let me speak to you. Don't be like everybody, be different. Let me explain. David was not the only covenant child. They were all covenant children. And there was no way it was written in the Bible, David would kill Goliath. He was the only one that had a heart to be different amongst them. That when he came even, the brother said, what are you doing here? You are not in the field. You have come here to show yourself. Through? He's different. He was different, so he made a difference. His income just went, Tim. Every time you want your income to grow, be different from every other person. Don't behave like others. Now listen carefully again. Let me give you another example. There was a man, there's a man called Joseph in the Bible. Joseph, Pharaoh had a problem. Have you had a what? And Joseph was the one who went to interpret Pharaoh's dream. Is that true? And professed solution to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, hey, there's no one as wise and discreet, just for the one, as thou art. Come and take over Egypt. Did he pray for his income to grow? Just a problem for Joseph. Now, hear this. Joseph had a different mindset. That's why believers listen. Joseph made a statement. I, when I talk to somebody, I pick everything. Joseph made a statement and said, I saw 11 stars. 11 what? Made obeisance to me. And two stars, the mother and the father. He called them stars. So it means they were not ordinary. He saw one of the stars too. But they didn't see themselves as stars. He only one who saw himself as a star. Listen, he said, I saw 11 stars. So they were all stars. Which means Joseph was not the only one. He said, but these 11 stars, but they didn't see themselves as stars. So they said, are you telling us that we are going to bow to you? He said, I don't know, but among the stars, me, I will stand out. He didn't say, I saw 11 people. He said, I saw 11 stars. So which means each one was a star. The covenant God had with Abraham. I shall make thy seed like the stars of heaven. So he said, all of you are stars of Abraham, stars of heaven. But amongst you, me, I'm going to be different. And then Joseph just stood there. If you are not different, you can't make any difference. True? <laughs> this day, the difference in you will show to your world. Yeah. Do you want income to grow? Be different from everybody. Be different from everybody. Don't go to office and behave like them. Anything you do, be different. Your income will work. You grow. So I hear. I pray you have understanding. Be bold to take on very difficult tasks. Joseph said, I'm going to interpret this dream and I'll profound solution that nobody else understood for Pharaoh. And Joseph, Pharaoh said, <laughs> take over Egypt. After this day, I pray the wisdom of God will answer to you that we take over nations. Yeah. That amen is too weak. Yeah. Lift your right hand and say, Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, put it here, say, I pray for wisdom to take over nations. And as I step out of this service, give me an idea, wisdom, to prefer solution to the challenges of life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want income to grow, number four, Respect those in authority. Respect those in authority. Respect those in authority. Every
everything you respect becomes attracted to you. What you reject, you will repel. Now, I'm not talking about eye service when I say respect those authority. I'm not talking about going to lie down and loyal. I don't mean those hypocritical respect. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Let me say this to you that will shock you. It is not your colleagues that will decide your promotion. It is your boss. Honoring your boss may put you in an uncomfortable situation with your colleagues. But if you respect people authority, most of your colleagues say every time you are doing as if you are the one in this company. But you don't have anything over your life. Because see your boss as that next step to move up in the organization. Respect authorities and perform excellently. Anyone around you should know that if they talk negatively about your boss, he or she will hear. Get to that point where they know that you are not part of the, you know, the first number one, I say no gossip. If you want to go to the organization, just let them know that if you talk about this boss, he's going to hear. So they know your position because he determines your rights. It determines what? Your boss determines your rights. Your colleagues can't promote you. Walk through the door that leads to your promotion with caution. W-A-L-K. Anywhere you are walking, don't toy with who is putting food on your table. Can I tell you the truth? Hmm? You're working in an organization and you don't value the boss. You don't have a future. You don't have... He decides when you'll be promoted. Your colleagues, they can be talking with you. They have nothing. They can't promote you. <laughs> Why many people cannot grow? They want to castigate the boss. Fight the boss. You will see they remain at the floor. Except the wicked boss. But the normal person, when you respect them, you grow in the system. Remember, I said not eye service, but respect your. Are you getting me, sir? Otherwise, your income will never. Who determines your promotion? Your colleagues? Okay. They, okay, your colleagues will they put food on your table? Number five. How <laughs> to increase your income? Number five. Prefer solution rather than complain. Prefer what? Rather than complain, want your income to increase. Prefer solution rather than what? Complaining creates mental blockage. Complaining stops creativity. If you want your income to grow, stop complaining. Stop what? Stop complaining. There are two types of people in the world. The ones who complain and those are prefer solution that creates products to help those who complain. <laughs> Do you have at all? We have to tell you, the ones who want complain. And if I tell you, they, including many of you, you belong to the complaining group. Nothing is working in this country. My friend, don't join the complainers. They compound their problems. Then the second group are those who prefer solution to the products of those who complain and produce products for them to buy. Now listen. <laughs> the whole world was complaining that the Arab world and Nigeria, like Nigeria, they are making oil. They say OPEC, 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 OPEC. The complaint was too much. Then one man just sat down. I said, this oil is becoming too problem and created electric car. He refused to complain. He's the richest man today. He's among the first four richest men, if not the richest, in your mocks. He refused to join the complainers. True? Somebody was complaining that he does not know the time of the day. Somebody created a watch. And that person complained that, oh, can't see well, created glasses. 
They used to complain, but I got, oh, people don't go to church. I put church early and brought to revival. <laughs> Stop joining the complainers. Profound solution. And you come with group. It's right here. Are you hearing me? Every time people complain, put your ears down to profound solution. I pray today, so we'll get an answer to that challenge. Amen. So financial growth depends on the number of problems you are willing to solve. Did you hear me? The more problems you solve, the more money you make. Now, let me tell you, for instance, I'm going to use Nigeria for an illustration. People are complaining exchange rate. Is that true? Is that true? I won't join complaining to exchange rate. You are complaining, oh, things are too expensive. That means time for local products, things to produce locally. Stop joining people to say the exchange rate is high, it's high, it's high. To buy one suit is almost this amount. Now, that means it's time to begin to produce suits in Nigeria. Of high quality. It's time to produce our own kind of dresses. I can't buy, I can't buy this, I can't buy this. There's something that's an alternative in Nigeria. Produce it. Is that true? Every expensive thing has an alternative. Do you know they can make local made shoes in Nigeria? You don't know? Very fine shoes. So tune your ears, tune your what? To hear the complaint of your boss, your clans, the society, and solve them. When they complain, say, what will I do concerning this situation? That's what you should be thinking, not joining them to complain. How can I meet the needs of this complaint? When the man will put money in your pocket, complain, find a solution to him. Are you get what I'm saying? Profound solution to somebody who put money in your what? Okay. That's how your income will work. Bro. Stop joining complainers. Don't complain. Profile solution. Say here. I mean, I'm getting blessed here. Are you getting really, really blessed? Are you getting blessed? Number six. Uh, is there anyone you, that you took? Is there anyone that consigns you? It's not copy notes. This one is my own. Every time I go to office, I follow them to be gossiping. Instead of me to sit down and think of how it work, is to make, oh, don't mind this man, thief. <laughs> Number six. Love to serve. As you walk. Love the what? If you want your income to grow, love to serve as you work. W-O-R-K. Matthew chapter 20, 26, 27. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Serving is what unlocks greatness. Service is the ladder to greatness. When we service, men don't understand service. In service, you put people first. You put what? Jesus said, I'm one amongst you that serves. If you do any business without people, the people first, you will never increase your income. So here. Because business is about people. It's about what? If you're producing a product, the people, you must serve the people first. Listen, don't think of the profit first. Okay, when I'm in service, listen, get it. If you want to come to crew, don't think of the prophet. Think of how the thing will serve them first. True? Elion Morris did not think of how to produce a car to make money first. He said, let me produce a car that will serve the people well. Money came. True? Am I talking to you, sir? You are doing something. First and foremost, how will this thing serve the people? Hmm? Income will do what? 
Vi klär det. Don't open a business to make money first. Open a business to serve the people first. Then income will increase. That's why many people. Do you go to a restaurant because the glass is very fine or the food is good? If the food they are cooking is not good and all the person is interested is to make profit, nobody will go again. That's why we miss it. We go first to think of making so we don't get the money. Go first thinking of serving the people. Then income will flow. So I hear. Hmm? Once you satisfy your consumers and customers, income will what? Will increase. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, I've not mentioned giving here. So most times it's not just giving that makes income to grow. Giving is very important. But you can see that most of us we give, but we don't serve people. We just open business. I want to make money. I want to make money. I want to make. No, that should not be your first focus. Number seven. Walk with great minds. W-A-L-K. Walk with what? Great minds. Work with great minds. If you want to come to grow, be careful what you hear and say. Everything you hear will affect you positively or negatively. Mind what you say too. It's a life and death at the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18 verse 21. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Proverbs 12, verse 14. You shall have whatsoever you said. Mark 11 to 3. Let me say this to you. If you want income to grow, pick your friends. Wrong relationship can cause a decline in income. Wrong what? can cause a decline in income. There are people you get close to, your income will begin to dwindle. They have no value. They have nothing they add to you. Your relationships will change your conversations because your conversations are the result of what you hear. Now listen, I'm going to explain to you. <laughs> When you are close to somebody, your conversation will begin to change. Because what you keep hearing will keep affecting your mind. Many who are not growing, they don't understand. What you keep hearing will affect your mind. Are you getting now? An experiment was done. Let it, yeah, just have a child. And every morning, just go to the child. Say, you'll be poor. Come again. You, you'll be poor. By the time the child grows, no matter the title the child will read, one voice will tell the child, you'll be poor. Because that's what the child has been hearing. Anything you keep hearing has power to affect your mind. And the mind controls your destiny. Your income can't grow when your mind has not grown. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when you are related with people, watch what they keep saying. What they keep saying will keep affecting you. That's why you must mind what you hear from every relationship. There are people who never say any productive thing to improve your mind. And that affects you. I said, change your conversations because conversations are as a result of what you so mind what you hear. Mind what you hear. Stop staying around disloyal people. Gossipers. Stay with those who improve you mentally. Who improve your what? Who improve you mentally. Are you on sharpened? Proverbs 17 verse 27, 27 verse 17. Are you on sharpened? Iron. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. A companion of fools shall be what? Why is my income growing? Because of my closeness to Bishop Edeko. That's his major secret. That's major what? Mind who you are close to. Mind who you are 
I was speaking to a young boy in the university outside this country. The boy asked me a very funny question. He said, Papa, can I ask you a question? He said, yes. I said, go ahead. He said, is it wrong to be close to young people? So I smiled. When children ask you questions, especially students, don't say, don't worry me. Answer them. So I smiled. I said, nothing wrong. But every association has a power on you. So don't think that somebody you're close to has no power over you. Ask yourself, is this person improving me or declining me or taking me down? Because every association will either draw from you or add to you, subtract from you or multiply you. Make your choice. Many want to grow their income, but they're in the wrong place. They're what? With the wrong people, saying the wrong things, and hearing the wrong things. I pray somebody today will decide to break out of that relationship. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. No association leaves a man neutral. Number eight, before I go to close, which was given to me. If you want to increase your income, increase your capacity. This was given to me on the altar here. Increase your wealth. Your income can grow if your capacity has not grown. God said to me, now listen. In Matthew chapter 25, if you read from verse 14 or 15 to 28, Jesus gave a parable. He gave one five talents. He gave one two talents. Gave one one talent. He said, every man is gifted. Every man is what? There's no ungifted person in the kingdom of God. We are all gifted. But God will not do certain things for you. If you want your income to grow, you have a responsibility to personally develop yourself. Personally do what? That cannot be done by God. Personal development is not prayers. It's done by you. You increase your capacity. Increase your what? Now let me say this. The man with five talents went traded, brought five talents. Is that true? I don't know if you've heard that story before. The man with two talents traded, brought more. The man with one talent could not multiply the one talent. He was very angry. Is that true? Now, all nations of the world were created by God at the same time in America and Nigeria. Well, how come some nations are high and some nations are low? Because one nation developed themselves, one nation refused to develop themselves. We are all men of equal destiny. Through Singapore was a third world nation. China was a third world nation. How come they now are hitting the first world? So don't think Nigeria will ever remain like this. Is that through? A time is coming Nigeria to hit the world. If we begin to develop our what? capacity. You want more income? Increase your capacity. Increase your worth. There are certain things you want to handle now. Your capacity can handle it. Let me explain to you. One day, Pastor Abiyo was teaching. I, 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 when someone was teaching, I learned too much. It's a, I, that statement was for him. He don't use an headmaster's brain to do the work of a VC. You cannot use an headmaster's capacity to do the work of a university. The university will crash. It's not school. It's personal development. You can go to school and not develop yourself. Income. Now, Listen, if they give you money, I'm going to, we're going to increase the income. I'm, I, this one is on the spot God gave to me. And I'm going to take time to dissect it. If they give you, for instance, 10 million naira, and your capacity is 2,000, the million 10 will come down to 2,000 naira. But if your capacity is 10 million, and they give you 2,000. You take the 2,000 and shift it to 10 million. So it is not more money. It's more capacity. I wish the money is big. It's a lie. I wish my capacity is big. 
My wife is my witness. So if you say God, you say we never all the money we came to Port Harcourt with was used for house rent. Not one dime was remaining. We didn't have reserve. But I had capacity. I had what? I, my capacity brought money, and that's why we are here. If my capacity is not big, the millions you're seeing won't be big. The capacity of Bishop Edekpo is too big. That's why he's the richest pastor. It's not because the members give offering. Tell a man with that capacity not to handle living faith, it will not work. The head determines the capacity of the system. When you have no capacity, the only way you can have income is to steal. But you can't generate income. So each one should develop what? And capacity development is not a gift. There's no gift or capacity development. You consciously develop yourself. Consciously what? Are you hearing me, sir? Can there be gift of me coming to preach? Hello? Can, is there any gift of preaching? I read. There's no gift. I read. I do what? I read. They don't say because I'm a pastor. I read. If I don't read, when I come here, you will know. You will know. See, this man did not read. See the way he's just talking. Just talking. No, 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 no. Just talk. Every business you want to do, increase your... In your career, increase your what? Then income will keep... Many of us problem. Now listen. Have a mental picture of three cups. You know, have a picture. Just mind, small tumbler, medium size, large size. And see God pouring water into them. When the water is full, what will happen? God will never want a waste. So when he gives you to the size you have and you don't grow, he stops. So you are the one to increase the container for more water to be poured. You're asking for more money when your capacity has not grown. You say, oh God, bless me with more money. God say, increase your capacity. Increase your what? And I pour more water. American India, which is bigger? Have you looked America? It's capacity. That your family, you have 12 children, does not mean that one child. <laughs> Two of you, some of you can be 12 children, and one person with the capacity, when they go for money, the one man money is bigger than that. So it's not population, it's capacity. It's what? Many Christians don't develop their capacity. I wrote a book, Last Next Place. Capacity is one of the chapters. Read that book, Last in, Read Capacity. I took time to break down capacity in that, in that book. It's a powerful thing that many Christians have no what? They want big offices without the capacity to match the office. That is the problem in this part of the world. They want big office but don't have the capacity for that you want to be a manager with a clerk's brain. This place, if they make manager, go manager. <laughs> you will dismanage it. Income grows when your capacity grows. It's not how much given to you. It's how much capacity you have. How many will grow their capacity? The man with the one talent, you know, could not handle it. The problem was that he had no worth. He had no capacity. Hmm? Have they given you money and you could do nothing with it? True? Have you handled money like this? And you look at the money. You say, see money went through my hand, but nothing to show for. Has it happened to you before? Poor capacity. Poor what? How much did I have here when this just started? Oh, you think, if I get money, no, 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 it's not money. It's capacity. Income grows with what? Not more money. Increase your capacity. Increase your capacity. And then more money come. You say, my office, they should promote me. Grow first before the promotion. If they give me manager of this place, I will go to do well. They give me manager. The work is suffering. The work is what? Let me close with some practical things to help you. Practical steps to getting answers to increase your income. I've taught you theory. Now I want to give you practicals as a child of God. Different from the society. 
practical steps. These are not things you find in the secular world. To give you answers to Christ. Number one, consult the Holy Spirit. Consult who? Consult the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 2, 9, 10, 11, 12. Look at it. But eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Now has entered the heart of man. The things we're going to prepare for them were nothing. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what men know the things of a man, save the spirit of man that is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. For what man, no, verse 12 finally please. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. So if you want your things to grow, consult who? Your spirit. Ask him questions. Ask him what? Questions. I have a big library, massive library. But when I want to read, I'll pause like this. As the Holy Spirit telling me the books to read. I don't just pick books. He said, pick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Read them. And when I read them, that's where the things I want will be found. Consult him. This thing I want to do, what do I do? When you're used to the Holy Spirit, next month, we got spirit empowerment, it's about the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me now? Everything I don't miss. I have a deep relationship with him. The ease I'm enjoying the ministry is from him. The secret of everything I do in life and ministry is from him. I have a deep understanding of how I relate with him. It's not most who do all that. But Christians don't relate with him. Hope you know. Many Christians don't have to relate with him. Most times we try to do it by power. If you want to beat unbelievers, you must consult him. You must do what? You're a believer. You want to increase your income. Stop doing it by like sinners. Go and consult the Holy Spirit. So I hear. Every field though, ask him, how do I do this business? As to make profit. Ask him questions. He loves you to ask him. He converses every day. He likes to talk. If he, said, he said, if your earthly fathers know how to give you, how much more shall the Holy Spirit, the Father shall give you the Holy Spirit, that what? Ask him. So you say, Holy Spirit, what do I do for this business to grow? He will not answer you if you don't ask him. Say, so here. <laughs> Lift your right hand and say, Holy Spirit, <laughs> even in this meeting, <laughs> answer me. <laughs> now, look at your life. One area, very simple prayer. One area you want income to grow, or one area you want an answer. Talk to him. No prayer. Just say, Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, what must I do in this area of my life? Go ahead and talk to him where you're seated. Even if it's your heart, he will answer you. Say, what must I do? What is it that I need to do to grow my income or to, to get an answer in this area? Talk to him. He will be shocked. He will tell you the answer. I don't want to go into a business without you. I don't want to start that business without you. Help me. I don't want to start that. What must I do concerning this challenge before me? Spirit of the living God, in Jesus' mighty name. May he give you an answer right now. Amen. This should not be only one. It should be a lifestyle. It should be a life That everything, even when you're walking, say, Holy Spirit, what must I do now? He will talk to you as a man talk to his friend. We, we are so religious, we believe that there must be some Religious regimented, regimented pattern where you have to stay somewhere. No, you don't have to. He can be sitting down and be pooing, and he gives you an answer. You know why? When you're pooing, nobody's warning you. My friend, when you're, when you're sitting down there, that's when you hear God well. Ask me why. Can you be pooing and be making phone call? No, that's no distraction. <laughs> Check when you're going to the toilet, no distraction. True? Have you seen a woman going to labor and be distracted? She's pushing. So when you're pushing like that, no decision. <laughs> and that's where God speaks to you. 
He knows nothing is distracting you that time. True? That's the best time to hear God. Number two, to increase your income, learn to set out time in a quiet place. Learn to set out time in a quiet place. If you want to increase your income. Now, Daniel chapter 2 verse 16, then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time that he will show the king the interpretation. Everybody should learn to have quiet time. Should I have to what? Listen, all businessmen all over the world, if what then there are times they just stay quiet. Don't live your life cha 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 money tonight. Every, say, give us what? Time. Time where you sit down quietly to begin to think. Say, come, let us resign. Quiet. You are not talking. You are thinking. Do you know wealth is a function of man's capacity to think? So, quiet time. Mostly at midnight. At what? Midnight. Shut down. I'm beginning to think. Just be thinking. Don't think problem. Think solution. Well, some of us will think problem. You see, if I don't think, what will I do? God did not tell you to think what? Philippians 4 8. Philippians 11. He told you to think solution. Say so here. Are you getting what I'm saying? Number three. Seek supernatural counsel from the Holy Spirit. Seek supernatural what? Counsel from the Holy Spirit. If you want your income to grow. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Let's read together. One, two, go. Proverbs 3 5. One, two, go. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not unto thy own understanding. Do you know it's a sign of arrogance if you don't pray to ask God question? The sign of what? I will tell you something. When I've shared it before, prayerlessness is a sign of pride. The sign of what? A sign of arrogance. I avoid arrogance by thinking that you can do it all alone. You won't be able. You need him. You need his counsel. You need his what? Now, let me tell you. I've shared this before. At the cathedral, when they were building it, they brought the drawing and showed me the drawing. The, the final drawing the structural engineers are through. And I've shared that over and over before. And I saw that the gallery pillars were so many inside the church. The gallery was with so much pillars. And these pillars are massive. So, I said, if we have these pillars, the aesthetics will be nasty. Are you going to say now? And I look at it, the aesthetics was distorted because the pillars were everywhere. I said, wow. I asked the structural engineer and the architect, they said, sir, there's nothing. The actor said there's nothing. And it's, structurally, it's, yes, there was nothing they can do. Because the distance was too long for them not to have pillars to support for safety. Professionally, they were right. But godically, they were wrong. Because there's an answer. That's what? What did I do? I went to the Holy Spirit. I'm, I've never read architecture in my life. Not, not I read engineering. I went to the Holy Spirit. And I consulted him. I consulted him. One way to consult him. Do you know how the way to consult him? Can I tell you a very simple way? Huh? Start singing on your own. And pray in tongues. Very simple. Sing on your own. Not with people. You don't, do, you don't care anybody. Almighty God. You're on your own. Oh. All wonderful God. Almighty God. Wonderful God, you are worthy to receive all our praise. You reign forevermore. 
mighty, oh my. Your mind is fixed on that thing you are trying to hear from him. He loves songs. And when you're done, it's a lady create the akushan to bradia kutale brekia. Chris has so breketulik in dia kushin talo brekia kutale ketia kusis as obrakatia katala. Then you pause. He will speak. He will what? You will hear him as a man hears his friend. Check every time we worship here. I pick signal. Just watch, just worship. Immediately my ear will make tap. I just went to him and he said, Tell them. And he gave me a vivid picture of what they would do. He showed me the drawing. He said, Tell the architect to shift the building backward. Now, and I told them and I said, Take the pillars backward and put the architect looked at me. And the man in the president said, This is not from man. I'm an architect. Now, so I'm a social engineer. This is from God. Nothing would have made us to think this way. What you're seeing today there, that pillars are not inside, came from me. But the Holy Ghost gave me. You are doing business. You are not selling. Go and ask him questions. Go and ask him what? Why is this business not growing? Why is this church not growing? Why am I not growing? Why is my income still at 25,000? Number four. Be creative. Be what? Be creative. Be creativity is a search for solution. Problems are the catalyst for creativity. Be creative, be what? Creative people are very curious. They are always seeking for a better way to do that thing they are doing. Never meet a job and leave it where you met it. We improve on it. If they give you any assignment, improve on the assignment given. Never take any assignment and leave it the way they gave it to you. So here. Be very creative. Be very what? And finally, number five. If you want to grow, be studious. Be what? We are in the age of information. Yesterday, is it yesterday I said, the difference between your today and tomorrow will be information. Will be what? If you don't read, you will not be updated. You will be obsolete. Income cannot grow if your knowledge has not grown. You can't use a 404 knowledge to grow the income of a modern pujo. You can't use the knowledge of T-square in the age of Archicad and AutoCAD. Do you know T-square? You can't use the knowledge of typewriter in the age of computer. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Children don't know typewriter. <laughs> Many want to grow their income, but their knowledge is wrong. You can't use receipt in your shop in the age where people buy things without writing with a hand. Just imagine you having a big supermarket and you are still using hand to say milk. You put your... <laughs> what do you say by milk? <laughs> One carton of milk. And then 50 people are standing on the queue. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> There's a shop. My wife went to an American. <laughs> I looked at my wife. I said, my wife, I know what going to be shopping <laughs> Oh, the old people in the shop are old, old people. <laughs> this thing is everywhere in the world, though. Old people, they put glasses like this. They say, what, what did you buy? <laughs> they were carrying one cloth like this. $20? Hold on. <laughs> I told my wife, after to tell this shopping, I'm not going with you. 
I said, you can't be going to, to these old people. I'm not coming. If you're a celebrity free, I'm not coming. <laughs> you want to come to grow. My friend, go and read. Go and what? Go and read. There's no gift of knowledge. There's gift of word of knowledge. No gift of knowledge. You must improve your mental system. I die you update or you'll be obsolete. Even your computer will tell you update. 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 <laughs> and the mind is like a computer. Daniel was a man of wisdom. First, Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.15 said, study to show yourself what? A workman that needed not to be actually divided by the word of truth. And Daniel 9 2 said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Understood by what? You can't increase your income if you are not a knowledge seeker. It don't have to be, say, just I'm an illiterate. Listen to tapes. Listen to what? You are going to any business, you must read about that business. Listen, as simple as buying and selling, it has trade secrets. You may think that buying and selling is just to enter shop. It's a lie. You must know the trade secret of buying and selling. Otherwise, you start shop, it will close. You must have. It is not anointing. You must read. Listen, anointing cannot do. Now, listen, let me, let me tell you. Did we sing for healing? Did we sing for healing? Can I sing to teach? Anointing has done its path. Knowledge will do this one. I must read to come and teach you. That you are anointed, you pour oil on your shop. Does not make, if customers come, you must know how to handle customers, how to move the business to the next phase, how you can run 10 shops. With the, supermarkets are everywhere. How come supermarkets are in 10 places? Yet when the product is taken, they know. Went to South Africa years ago, about 17 years ago. We took a chocolate from the fridge. They came back to replace it. That is this, the, 17 years ago. That any detail from the fridge, the system will pick it and that has been removed. I think, you know, most international places, even your ticket, you, yourself, you do your ticket yourself. Nobody's at the counter. You go there, put your passport, print out your ticket, print your body pass, even your luggage, you weigh it and pay for it. The world is going that way. In us, no. Okay, Cambros. <laughs> you want your income to grow. You will remain with okay, Cambros. Church, are you hearing me? Growth in income is not growth in knowledge. The world is growing. The world is what? The world is growing. You have to grow with the world. Are you getting me? Have I said something here? So it is time for me to look for a problem to solve and increase my income. Are you ready for that? 